How's it going everyone? So iOS 18.2 is just around the corner and we have it installed on our device. Right here on my main iPhone that I've been testing out for quite a while. And this is Monday after the second version of RC that got released earlier this morning to its registered developer betas. So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and get you prepared when this full version is officially released sometime during this week, at least hopefully. So the compatible devices are right there listed as follow. Basically any iPhone that's able to run iOS 18, it's all fully compatible. And don't worry about this, I'm gonna go over this as well as a nice little bonus at the end of the video. Now, timestamps will be linked in the description down below for your pleasure. And let's go ahead and start off with the non-Apple intelligent features. First, because these are the most likely to be available for everybody else. So one of the new updates is actually your photo app. By launching the photo app, if you scroll all the way down to utilities, right in here, there's now a handwriting as well as a receipt section. And you can look at your previous receipts you may have took photos of for document purposes, as well as handwriting that's now fully compatible. But if we go ahead and load like a video, if we go all the way to the very right, you now have a new scheme tool because now it actually tells you the exact second. And you may have noticed some of your videos may also automatically loop. You can disable the automatic loop function by going into your system settings and go down into photos. You'll locate it in the photo app. Keep going down until you find a photo app, tap on it, and scroll down until you find loop videos. And this is where you can go in and disable that. That's a new little tool that Apple gave us. Then as for the podcast app, the podcast app also received a new update because if we click on library, there's now new categories. We can search based off categories. And if you hit manage, you can add additional categories you may be interested in like stand up, true crime, and etc. Business news as an example, if we hit add and click on it, you can also favorite this as well. So that's a new little tool added. Now in terms of Apple TV, the Apple TV app also received a new update because now you can search off more specific categories. As an example would be action movies with swords. So you could be more detailed than ever before. So you could also say examples like movies based on space or in space, I should say, and etc. This feature is also available on Apple Music as well. As you could do more specific searches like an example, I just searched up instrumental EDM songs and all these songs are instrumental and they are EDM based. So you could also do this based off your mood too. And then as for the mail app, ignore this, this is all junk mail. Your mail is now automatically categorized as you may already be aware of, but a lot of people don't know this. You can still select the little dots icon on top right here and select list view if you don't, if you want to reverse back to the classic original look, if you're not a fan of it. So you do have that reversibility. And then in Safari, by trying to open up a new tab and tap plus, and if you scroll all the way to the very bottom and you tap edit, you have new wallpapers to select from, or you can import your very own like I have here. And then if you're using Apple's AirTag, the Find My feature, after you select an AirTag, if you go all the way to the very bottom, if you mark this AirTag loss, you can update your contact information. So when it's found, they know how, where to get a hold of you. But on the very bottom, there's now a new share item location, which allows you to send an email, which will give somebody else access to your AirTag. Extremely handy to use, especially if TSA misplaced your baggage and you have an AirTag on it, you can allow them to have access to your AirTag in case you can't stick around for the TSA to use to help locate your baggage faster. That's one great way to utilize that feature. And then if you have your hands on a new AirPods Pro second generation and you are not based in the US, the hearing aid functionality is now fully compatible to be used in other regions such as Italy, United Kingdom, Spain, French, and more. The hearing aid functionality for the AirPods Pro second gen is now fully compatible to be used in other places, not just here in the States. Another update can be located in the voice memo app. As soon as you hit record, you now have the ability to do voiceover overlays. Here's one I did a while ago. If I hit the audio logs, I could time it. And as you see here, we have a new plus icon. If I tap on this and hit record, you can actually overlay your previous voice memos. Then if you have an Apple Watch, so long as the Apple Watch is on the latest version of WatchOS 11.2, by launching the camera app, and if you tap record, you now have the pause ability for your recording where you can pause your recording and resume. The same tool that was given to us on iOS 18 is now on the Apple Watch as well. 
Now, as for the Apple Intelligent features, that's exclusive to the iPhone 15 Pros and newer 16 and 16 Pro models. They'll have these Apple Intelligent features. And the first one is Playground. Right here, Apple Playground. Now it's snappier than ever before. If you'd like to create a new image, you simply just tap on your profile over here and select the face you like to select and then tap done. Wait a couple of seconds and it'll generate it based off that image. You can also tap plus to import a photo if it's somebody else or take a photo, a selfie right there. You can select the animation style. Then if you'd like to change the style of the image, you can also tap edit right here and select between these other options as well as skin tone. Once you find one that you're satisfied with, select the face that you like to create these images from, or you can tap edit. It'll search up your library and you can select between these other profiles that Apple Intelligence have created. You can also choose your very own by hitting choose other photo. But by simply tapping this and select, selecting what type of category you want to use, you want fireworks in the background, allow it to generate, and you can tap on it and you can see your two little options right here. And once you're satisfied, you can tap these dots, you copy, share it, save image, or report a concern. But that's Playground in a nutshell. Another cool tool is Genemoji. You'll simply have access to it by launching the message app with somebody you're talking to. Tap the emoji icon and right here, tap on the little face. And from here, just type up something that comes to mind. So I'm gonna do smelly poop. So we get that poop emoji, you know? Hit done. Take a couple of seconds to generate it. And just like that, it created our options. So I really did create some stinky emojis right here. And it just goes on and on and on until you find something you like. We're gonna add this. Tap add, and now we have successfully created emoji. Then you can tap send, and if you scroll back, you can react to it with this emoji as well. You should see it listed right there. That's Jet Emoji in a nutshell. Another cool thing that Apple Intelligence can do is lo it's located in a note app, and that is drawing. If we draw something like, let's just draw a truck real quick, long bed, because that's how pickup trucks roll. All right, that's my best truck right there. The magic one. If you tap on this new tool and you circle around the icon or the drawing that you created, you could describe what you were trying to draw. So I'm just going to type in truck, tap done. And based off our drawing outline and in the description, it AI generated a truck and we have more options to choose from. And once you're satisfied, just tap done. And now you have an AI generated image of a pickup truck, which can be super useful if you're in a, if you're grouped in a note app and you guys are trying to share ideas. And then this doesn't just end there. You see, if we tap done and we have access to our keyboard and you click on the Apple intelligence icon on the very bottom, there's now a new compose option where you use ChatGPT to compose data for you. So as an example would be, show me the benefits between a gas vehicle and an electric vehicle and then tap search. It's going to compose something for us. And then basically gives us everything we need to know with, between the benefits over a gas as well as an electric vehicle. And you can rewrite it as well as add more details. So it's pretty crazy how it's able to come up with all this information in just a matter of seconds. And if you have access to ChatGPT, like you have a ChatGPT account that you actually do use, by going into the iPhone settings and scrolling down to the Apple Intelligence and Siri tab, from here, there's a ChatGPT section. If you're a subscriber to ChatGPT Pro or Plus, you can just log in with your ChatGPT account and you'll be able to utilize those monthly benefits that you subscribe to on your iPhone as well. But even if you have the free version, it's good to actually log in with your ChatGPT account as your data with ChatGPT will be all synchronized with your iPhone right here. But regardless, it's not necessary to have a ChatGPT account to take advantage of some of these iPhone features. But if you like to talk to ChatGPT over Siri, you can always just say, ask ChatGPT instead of Siri. So an example would be, ask ChatGPT. And you'll be able to talk to ChatGPT instead of Siri. You could bypass it that way. Now, if you have an iPhone 16 with the new action camera button right here, by long holding, this is gonna launch visual intelligence, which allows you to do stuff like this. If you're unsure what kind of product you're looking at, you can always tap search. And utilizing your camera, you could tap search and utilizing Google images to determine what you're looking at. You may also ask it questions too. If you have questions, between the image that you're looking at, if you're unsure what kind of AirPod this is, ChatGPT will slightly describe it right here for you. And you can also engage in a conversation this way as well if you want to know more specification to that product or questions you may have. So that's uh, iOS 18.2 in a nutshell. Now, as an added bonus, I did stated I was gonna show you how I got access to this classic iPod. 
skin on my iPhone, which works extremely well, gives you haptic feedback. You can basically search for your music albums, your playlists from here. And when you select it, it really does behave like an actual iPod classic. And once it OLED the screen, it really does look like it. I can hit skip, pause. You can also go back and go into settings and change the theme of your device if you own like any of these older classic iPods. So if you have like the white one, silver one, or that special edition one, you could just change the skin right here. And this is all thanks to this app over here. So the app that allows you to do this is called My Classic Retro Console. I have a link in the description down below. But by simply launching this app, it will take you to this classic like Game Boy Color theme, right? And here you can launch your podcast, listen to music as well, play some like knockoff Nintendo games, as well as have access to like a weird virtual camera, basically like an old school like camera, you kind of see that. But there's a cool little Easter egg to this app, you see? By entering the iconic Konami sheet code, like up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, and BA, you will unlock the My Classic look and just tap next, and basically, it turns your iPhone into an actual iPod Classic. It even monitors your battery life percentage. And it does this by utilizing your Apple Music app. So it has these two apps running in the background. So once you shuffle a song, it's playing, right? And if we go back to our music app, it shows that it's playing it right there. So it's definitely an interesting, unique app right there. And I'm going to start using that a lot more, especially during my workouts, because I do think this layout's a lot easier to use, especially when it comes to just music listening. But there we have it. That is everything there is to know about the new upcoming iOS 18.2. Make sure you are subscribed because I do plan on doing a more in-depth, a little bit more information than what we saw in this video. So if you enjoyed, make sure to leave this video a like as well as help me out a lot. As I do like to make my videos powered by you guys, not sponsorship ads and stuff integrated in these videos. So thank you to those that hit that like button a like and allowing this channel to be powered by you guys. Now, if you'd like to watch more, maybe you missed my previous video of all the cool stuff that you could do with the setup AirPods Pro second generation with the hearing aid functionality. Check it out right over there where I go through some nifty hidden features that a lot of people always overlooked. My name was Eddie and thank you so much for watching.